and then Tara's also got the amplified version and she's going to share on different points as well. But um, I think this is a, a wonderful psalm because uh, mm. it's a personal one. It's a psalm of David. And in these times where we, we might be in our homes, we might be on our own, or we've got a lot of time on our own, um, this is a psalm to remind us actually of how near our Heavenly wow. Father is to us. Yeah. It's a personal um, experience. A, a shepherd was someone who would uh, guide the sheep, mm. who would pasture the sheep. He would look after their every need. You know, sheep are what, sheep are the most vulnerable, vulnerable. <laughs> animals on the planet. You know, um, they're, they're basically like a walking meal, um, <laughs> if, you know, if you're not careful. And, uh, and a shepherd would have to stave off, you know, uh, wolves and bears and lions and, and all kinds of other predators. And so you and I are described as sheep, which kind of shows our true condition, doesn't it? We're, we're vulnerable. We're we, needing a shepherd. We do need a we shepherd. We actually need a shepherd. And so as we're reading this today, let's be aware of the Father's care for us. Yeah. As we go through and we unpack this, let's be aware of God's tender mercies. And sometimes, you know, he, he might rescue us from harm and we don't even know it. Mm. Or we think, God, why did you do that? But we don't see the bigger picture. Wow. So in this season, let's be grateful that we have a heavenly father mm. who is the good shepherd. The great shepherd yeah. of the sheep. Great mm. shepherd of the sheep. That's mm. right. So I'm going to read to us from the New American Standard Bible. And it says this, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Wow. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Wow. This is an incredible uh, passage of scripture. And right mm. now we're just going to just kind of work our way through that. And so if you've got it open before you, I'm reading from the New American Standard. Tara is going to elaborate a little bit. From, I've got the amplified, uh, the amplified version. Yeah. But why don't we just start with that opening uh, passage, Tara. Mm. Um, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Mm. Yeah, why don't you share a few thoughts with us today around that? Well, I think for me, just the fact that I can actually call him my shepherd. Mm. He's mine. I know he's yours. Yeah. And he's many people's shepherd, but he's also my shepherd. Yeah. He personally leads me and he mm. guides me and mm. he protects me and he watches out for me and he's for me and not against me and the fact that I have a lover of my soul I'm yeah. reminded when I read that that David that was David's cry mm. you know the Lord is my shepherd and sometimes you've just got to remind yourself mm. um, that God is with you and he's for you and not against you and and he does, he feeds us, he guides us, and he shields us. Mm -hmm. And when we're in his protection, you know, I'm reminded that we actually have nothing to fear. Yeah. And we lack no good thing. Yeah, that's good. You know, David says, I shall not want, or I mm -hmm. shall not lack. And yeah. uh, I'm reminded actually yeah. of Jesus' teaching in Matthew 6, where he teaches on earthly possessions and mm. on, you know, um, you know, seeking first the kingdom of God, you know, not worrying about what tomorrow has to offer or wow. might not offer because today, you know, has enough concerns of its own. And mm. so, you know, here we see of the great shepherd, he doesn't want us mm. to be in want. Wow. And, uh, and, you know, so I'm reminded of Jesus' teaching and that, that, that our heavenly father, like he provides for the, the birds of the air wow. or for any other creature mm. in his creation, mankind man and woman are the pinnacle of his creation how much more if he provides for the birds of the air mm. will he provide for us That's you know so and true. so we have no want in the lord it goes on in verse 2 to say he makes me lie down in green pastures he mm. leads me beside quiet waters 
And so this is, a, again, mm. a beautiful image of, number yeah. one, it says here that he leads us, yeah. you know. We need to be leadable, if that makes sense. Um, there's nothing worse, I think, than if I was a sheep that was constantly going astray or mm. getting caught in a thicket somewhere and always <laughs> needed rescuing, I want to be the kind of sheep that the Lord says, you know, um, echoes, you know, that well done, good and faithful servant. You know, I'm someone who mm. has pursued God. I'm someone who is easily leadable. I'm someone And I who, also think of, you know, like they say that saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Mm. It's like, you know, we can lead people as pastors yeah. so far, but we can't drink for you. Yeah. And, um, and the same is for me. Like I, as I come into a time with the Lord, I need to drink of mm. what he has for me. Yeah. And it says that he leads me beside still and peaceful waters. Mm. And I can only get that if I partake of his presence because yeah. something super like it's spiritual yeah like his peace is imparted to me on a spiritual level and i can't get that through listening to a good podcast i can't get the peace yeah. of god through listening to a a relaxing you know soundtrack those things can help doing a yeah. meditation um on a scripture and these yes. things but it's a supernatural encounter it where is. the peace of god is imparted and so, um, yeah, yeah, I think al allowing the Lord to lead us beside mm. quiet waters. I mean, that's, that's also speaking of the Lord's intention. Mm. He is a good God. He wants to lead you beside quiet waters and he wants to restore your soul. Yeah, man. And so this is the God that we know and that we love and that yeah. we serve. And so if there are times of unrest, like at the moment, you know, I think it's possible to, you know, be still in the storm. I Absolutely. think it's possible to be calm, mm. even though the winds are blowing. Well, Jesus slept in the storm. He did. Everyone yeah. else was stressing and he was fast asleep. Yeah, that, <laughs> What's all this worry and yeah, racket about? Yeah, in that little boat. And <laughs> yeah. so I believe that that same calm mm. can live within us. And I believe if we're a people of faith and we're a people of wisdom, we, we follow good advice mm. and we, we do mm. things properly and because well. Because Jesus doesn't look at the climate he has his eyes fixed firmly on the Father. He's not looking he at the storm. You know, God is not worried. Yeah. <laughs> He's never worried, you know. And sometimes when things happen in my life, I think, well, God knew that was going to happen. Mm. It might have come as a shock to me. But yeah. God's always, you know, steps ahead of us and he sees our beginning from our end and um, and he's a good God and yeah. yeah very good. Mm. So it goes on in verse in, three. In, at the, uh, mm. Further in verse three, it says, he restores my soul. Mm. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Wow. Uh, that's beautiful. You know, mm. you and I, our lives are a witness when he guides you and I on a path of righteousness. Right standing. Right right standing or mm. the word righteous means innocence. You know, when, when we live innocent lives through Christ, when we continue to pursue mm. uh, God's holiness and, and uh, by his grace, you know, we stand in that place. Mm. And so, but it's for his namesake that we pursue those paths of righteousness, that he wants to radiate his goodness and his glory through you and I, you know, it talks in Philippians about Christians, you and I, that live lives of good character. It says that we shine like stars in the universe. Wow. You know, that is a beautiful image in scripture. And that's what I believe that this passage here is talking about, mm. that he guides me in paths of righteousness for, for his, his name's sake. sake. Yeah. We're a witness unto the world. That, that glory that shines out of you when you respond to that angry person with grace, or when mm. you practice patience, or when you exercise any fruit of the Holy Spirit, mm. God is glorified. Mm. And so allow him to lead us today. Let's allow him to lead us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And verse four, yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear or dread no evil for you are with me. Mm. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Amen. Mm. That's so good. Mm. And so, you know, that's quite pertinent, isn't it, at the moment to we, we, we could feel like we're caught in a bit of a valley, a valley, in a bit of a dark place at the moment with COVID-19. You know, in salvation history, I, I think back and, you know, there's, there's probably one time where the, literally the whole world 
was affected and that was under the flood of Noah. That was wow. a, a pandemic of types, if you like. Mm. And um, But God was also in that. You know, he was in that place and he was bringing about change on the earth. He was yeah. elevating his righteousness and his righteous ones. And so I just want to mm. encourage you, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will yeah, the, fear. The shadow might be there. Fear not. But I, I will mm. fear no evil. You you will be with me. That's and so right. that that is uh, something that I just want us to take personally at the mm. moment. That's a scripture that we can apply to ourselves. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, yeah. if you've received the Holy Spirit, if you trust in God, then he's going to be with you. Amen. Call on his name. Fear not. And so it says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The rod and the staff mm. were um, tools of the shepherd. You know, he would guide the sheep with the rod and the staff. They were also uh, defensive weapons or offensive weapons at times against um, yeah, the wolf or the bear or the lion. Wow, I, I would hate to fight a bear with a rod. Can I, know. You, like, I think I'd be a goner. <laughs> it'd, it'd need to have a nice bit of heavy metal or yeah. stone or something on the end of it. Jeez. And uh, But yes, it, it, you know, it'd be difficult. But, you know, our shepherd is skilled. Mm. He knows how to use those, the rod and the staff. Um, here, it, it uses them in a sense to... Like the um, symbols. As symbols of correction and symbols of guidance in our lives. Mm. And so, you know, it says in Hebrews 13... And protection. That, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Protection. He wants to protect us because he loves us. And it says in Hebrews that God... Uh, disciplines, Hebrews 13, mm. God disciplines those that he loves. And so mm. the rod and the staff, they're here actually to comfort us. They're mm. here to correct us. Mm. And so don't let's not despise the discipline of God yeah. uh, in these seasons. Let's have ears that hear That's and right. eyes that see. And let's uh, humble ourselves so that we can receive the correction mm. when it needs to come. What's the next passage? Uh, so verse 5, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil and yeah. my cup runs over. That's beautiful, mm. beautiful. I just think of that, the table is such a symbol of intimacy. You know, it when is. you invite someone over yeah. for a meal, um, you know, you're bonding with them over fellowship yes. and over, you know, you've actually invited them into your home, you've prepared something. Mm. And here we have a picture of the table that Jesus and our Lord has prepared for us and he Amen. wants us to come to the table and spend time with yes. him. And especially in this season when time is available to us, mm. um, possibly many of you have a lot more time. The gift of time, don't waste yeah. it in this season. Yes. You know, come to the Lord's table and commune with him. It's beautiful. Yeah, that's so good. But in the presence of my enemies, what's that yeah. bit about? I think, yeah, the presence of our enemies, I mean, God's grace and mercies and provision, even when we're in our hardest moments where we might face adversity from those who would try to do harm to us, God yeah. gives us absolute peace. That symbol there of the table and of a meal being prepared is not just a symbol, I think, of intimacy with God, but intimacy with God in the midst of great adversity, even wow. when those that would come against us, mm. who would have it in for us, who would try to undermine our lives mm. and our peace and our joy and all of the other things. Or that, it might not be people, but it might yeah. be circumstances. Like you know, with what's like, going on, yeah. Yeah, when you're feeling like there's a storm around you in your life. And, yeah. um, but in the midst of that, absolutely, our yeah. God, has he's still our shepherd. Yes. And, and um, it says there, you've anointed my head with oil. This is a symbol of the Holy Spirit, oil. Mm. And, uh, and of the blessing of God. And so mm. we are blessed even in adverse circumstances. Let's not forget, mm. church, who we are in Christ. Mm. So important, you know, our mind, you know, the battle is fought and won in the mind. Mm. That's what the scripture teaches us. It says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind mm. so that you might be able to test what is good and pleasing wow. to God. And so <laughs> in these times, um, let's al allow our heads to be anointed with oil, yes. our minds to put on the mind of Christ, it says, and let's not forget uh, the goodness of God mm. and that we are children of God yeah. and allow our good shepherd to bring us through this time mm. into a place of green pastures. Mm. And so and um, finally, verse yeah, six. Yeah, very good. Would you like me to read that? So yes. it says, surely only goodness, mercy and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. 
and through the length of my days, the house of the Lord and his presence mm. would be my dwelling place. Yeah, very good. Mm. And so here we again have a picture of blessing. Yeah, and, uh, it's like know, God's goodness chases us yes. and his unfailing love chases us and his blessing chases us down will follow us yeah, absolutely amen. and it says and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever this is mm. a really important um picture you know because actually blessing as we read in deuteronomy 28 when it talks about blessing pursuing god's people it's it, it gives the preface of you know if you obey and if you follow me wow. um, these blessings will follow you and i believe this mm. is a a, a, an image that we see here and mm. and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever it finishes on us being planted and and us being established not in God's house and that's about his mm. people mm. and even though at the moment we're meeting online and by phone and and by other um, social distancing means mm. I want to encourage you that you and I together are grounded in the house of the Lord Amen. that his blessings will pursue you you know in Psalm 92 it says those who are planted in the house of the Lord will flourish in the courts of our God. It says, even in old age, they will produce fruit. Wow. And so those that are planted in the house of the Lord, it says, will flourish. That's an imagery there of God's blessing. Yeah. They will flourish in the courts of our God. Mm. And so I want to encourage you today, if you're undecided, just jump in. You won't always feel like it, but I'll tell you what, if I lived off just my feelings, mm. To what I'd be in a very different place in life, but mm -hmm. allow the, the the love and the the values that are in Christ. Allow your Christian values to guide you in this season. Live with strength. Live with your values, yeah. and then the feelings will follow. Mm. That's the truth. Mm. And so allow yourself in this time to be planted, yeah, to be rooted deeply in His love. That's so good, for Jane. You. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Shall we pray? We hope yeah. that bless you this morning. We do. That's Psalm 23. Very good. Would you like to pray? Yeah. For us? Look, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I pray for every person who's watching in this moment, Lord God. I pray for Psalm 23. Lord God, and, uh, yeah. and all of these beautiful promises, Lord, mm. that are uh, embedded in this psalm. Yes, I God. pray, Lord God, for every blessing mm. to pursue your people, Lord mm, God, amen. that, Lord, they'd be filled with love and joy and mm. peace and hope today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. amen. We'll see you soon, guys. Bless you.